So, um, it was also a way of making images really, really fast, or say, say making a painting really, really fast. And that, but that way in which it connects you to your participants is so amazing and I guess so relevant for those who want to inspire through the arts and want to engage because photography, if you're talking about art forms and mediums that really engage people, I think I would have to say photography is definitely uh, one of the most powerful um, for that, not just in the instance of taking the photograph, but also by elevating the subject or the participants and putting them in museums or galleries or putting them into spaces where they wouldn't normally go. That's another level of engaging people who wouldn't normally be attracted to the art. So I started out with a series called Beauty Untold. And this series is a, is a celebration of the uncelebrated beauty that exists in everyday people and situations. So really the inspiration behind this and the, and the need to kind of create this series came from me seeing a big gap or a big disparity between what I saw being represented in the media and what I would see or the beauty of the people that I would see every day just walking around in the street. I don't know. I, I can't hear this one. Wow, we're having a lot of swapping going around. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so the way I felt was that if certain people were represented at all, it was, it's usually in a way that is very reductive or, uh, you know, very simplistic. And all of us are complex beings, much more than what we are represented in the media. So I wanted to share my vision um, as opposed to what I was seeing in the media. So. This, these are some images from a series that I did called Britain Retold, uh, a portrait of London. This series allowed participants to redef redefine what Britishness means in London um, as people, from dif people of different cultural heritage and cultural backgrounds um, like myself and um, in, in a way that allowed new associations to exist alongside tradition. So you might see some familiar faces in there. But this, uh, this show debuted at City Hall. And the idea of a lot of the work is to actually bring it into spaces where it can, I guess, enlighten people that wouldn't know. You know, so there were actually statements that accompanied each of those some places while it, where it's been um, exhibited. So, um, so yeah, the idea was really is really to use this medium as a way of opening minds, challenging stereotypes, and that has manifested in many different uh, types of projects. So this one, which showed earlier this year at uh, the Royal Festival Hall, um, is a series of series of portraits based in the cities London, Paris, and New York of women who wear hijab um, in colorful and exciting ways. Again, you know, this looks at a group of people whose image is so misrepresented and so maligned in the media. And again, you have that disparity between what's shown in the media and between the people we actually know, the people that we actually know and see every day. So again, this was to try and share a perspective. So these are some of the images that were featured. That one's actually from Philly Vale. That one hasn't been uh, um, exhibited yet because we then extended it to Philadelphia um, and Chicago and Toronto. But yeah, I mean, it's really what's really exciting about this series for me is that you know, I wouldn't do this series in Iran, where I'm from originally, or Saudi, because women are forced to wear it. But to do it in a place 
like a, you know, fashion capital, a Western city, where nobody has to wear it, but they're choosing to wear it. It's exciting because you see all of these um, popular culture influences. You see it as really a way of people identifying themselves proudly. Um, and, it's, and they're doing it out of choice. They're doing it in their own way and they're doing it creatively. And so this kind of goes back to the idea of transformation. I'm really excited about this uh, the, and inspired by the concept of transformation. So I suppose what that means to me is that each of us is presented with, with challenges in life and we have the choice of how we respond to those challenges. And this project was really inspired by the idea of transformation, but it's also an illustration of that because you have these people who are young, female, visibly Muslim at a time where, you know, there is so much misunderstanding towards Muslims and yet they shine and they light up the path wherever they go and they dress in these amazing ways. So um, I really wanted to exhibit this in the Royal Festival Hall because um, so many people they just see the veil, they don't see the person. You know, and this could be said of every, and many groups of people, not just this group of people, they just see what's on the outside. But what happened in the exhibition is we now see like a different image of women who are veiled, not just the woman in the media in the war-torn country wearing a black veil, but we see a different image. And then on top of that, we created video as well. We created a a video that allows women to speak with their own voices. And on top of that, we did a Q&A, which I brought some of the girls, some of the participants in, so the people who attended could then actually ask them the questions themselves, you know? And a lot of them were quite surprised, actually, by... Um, there we go. So um, the image on the right-hand side is a Royal Festival Hall, and the image on the left-hand side is some of the works that are currently showing in Florence, Italy at the moment. So some of you may or may not have heard of this project, the Dandelion Project by African-American curator Chantrell P. Lewis. So I'm one of the artists included in this incredible project, which has just finished at the Museum of Contemporary Photography in Chicago and is now at the Pittsburgh, the Silver Eye Center for photography in Pittsburgh and it will be touring the United States. Now, when uh, Chantrell first approached me about this project, she said, you've got to photograph some British black dandies for me. I said, cool, I know quite a few people that would fit into that category already. But then we developed e even further, but her idea around this was similar to my idea around the veil. Here you have a group of people whose image is so... Uh, misrepresented and maligned, especially in American media, but in media in general. Yet, you have a group of men who are choosing to dress sartorially, choosing to dress in this particular way as a rebellion against the kind of baggy pants, um, the exposed box. So this particular image that has been perpetuated in the media around black men. So that was her concept. It was very easy for me to shoot around it, but, uh, but then the... Um, when it was actually shown in Chicago, it actually was one of the most successful exhibitions that the Museum of Contemporary Photography actually has ever seen. It was, there was about, there we go, you can see it over there. The middle image and the, middle, and the image on the right are from the Museum of Contemporary Photography and you can see one of the images has been blown up to 12 foot, which to me is really exciting and the next level of using the arts to elevate. So. Yeah, amazing. So I've just uh, been in Rome working on a new series called Black Girls in Rome with a writer called Tamara Pizzoli. Again, we're looking at a minority. Exactly. You said black. <laughs> because there's hardly any, right? So in, in Italy, about 8% is non-Italian. So within that group, you have an even smaller minority of, of black women in Rome. So, but these people are there, they're, they're living, they're thriving, they're working and uh, contributing to the, the society even though they're not necessarily understood or represented. So this was an exciting uh, project for me uh, to do. And we created another, a video again around this where uh, the women spoke uh, about their own experiences, the challenges, the positives and, and everything. 
So this is, this was due to show in Rome in October, but I think we're going to push it now to spring 2016. And there you go. I'll just leave you with a few, a couple of really nice quotes um, about art and artists and why it's, it's so powerful. So the top one is probably my favorite. We artists must create a new dialogue and it's left up to us, the writer, the artist, to create this vision, not the politician, the diplomat, or the state, statesman, from John Oliver Killens. So I, I really do feel like the artist picks up where the politician kind of fails, and I think that, that teachers, people who work with uh, young people, are very, very important, you know, in, in shaping, in making a difference, you know? So, and of course, creativity and the arts can be used really, really powerfully in this way to actually move people. Because if you can change the way someone feels, you can change the world. And artists have that power. So thank you very much.